Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, where you are. So we're located, I'm Ron Kaplan, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, Doug Soltes is in the Dallas area and Richie Murray is in Tennessee. What city are you in? Nashville, Richie? north of Nashville. In Nashville. Oh man, yeah, Music City. So let's give it another minute or so and then we'll get started. Uh, thank you for joining us. While okay. Waiting, if you're interested, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to get started. I don't like to wait on these webinars too long. You know, people have showed up on time or on time, so we're going to get started. So, um, welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Ron Kaplan. As I said earlier, I'm VP Sales over here at Storage Made Easy, uh, and um, I'm happy you joined this webinar. No limits collaboration in the cloud with Lucid Link and the Enterprise File Fabric. So, first of all. Uh, if you have questions during the session, please please enter them in the questions panel. Um, we're going to have time at the end to, to take some Q&A. Uh, let me introduce our presenters. So first, uh, Richie Murray is the CEO of Bridge Digital and a Storage Made Easy reseller. He's got over 20 years working in media as a technologist and an entrepreneur with particular expertise in digital workflows and the technologies that make them work, uh, I should say digital media workflows. Doug Soltes is the Director of Product Solutions at Storage Made Easy, and he's led the charge in the development of the technologies to enable media and entertainment workflows. Early in his career, Doug was the CIO and uh, later worked as a Director of Product Solutions for a couple of major uh, cloud storage companies. So let me first set up the webinar. So even before the pandemic, you know, our approach to work had been changing. Now, and I believe most of you agree that remote work is here to stay to one degree or another. And that certainly impacts the media business, which is characterized by, you know, particularly large files and, you know, what I call extreme collaboration requirements. So, you know, the technology we're going to use going forward must be able to address, address these two critical aspects. Um, LucidLink is one of our partners, and they provide a file system in the cloud that enables users in media to collaborate with very large files uh, using applications such as Premiere, Avid, and Final Cut Pro. Richie Murray has extensive expertise with LucidLink and is going to share his perspective with us. One of Richie's axioms is that across the production lifecycle, video assets are always in the wrong place at the wrong time and in the wrong format. And I'm sure many of you agree. Richie, can you tell us what you mean by that and how it's relevant to the discussion? Sure. The different um, life cycles of, of content dictate um, the storage performance and accessibility. If you're doing ingest, you can't afford to have any frames dropped and you may or you may be close to where the content is actually being produced. However, in an edit, workflow, you may be a great distance from um, where that original content was ingested. So using using uh, a mixture of on-prem cloud and hybrid cloud solutions like LucidLink allows for content to be um, manipulated based off of its accessibility and performance requirements. Uh, so that's that's what I mean about media being in the wrong place in the wrong format at the wrong time. We, we making it accessible relative to the performance requirement at that point in the li okay. life cycle of that media. Okay, thanks, Richie. So, so Doug, why don't you orient us to, to what we're going to do today first? 
Yeah, I think we have a demonstration of that. So uh, today we are going to be working with multiple types of storage. So just like any company would have, uh, if you're looking at my screen right now, we're using the enterprise file fabric, which is a layer that goes on top of uh, storage. And so in my media company, uh, we have some Backblaze out in the cloud. We have some Wasabi out in the cloud. We could have other clouds like Azure, Google, any of the big clouds, we could have their storage. We've got some Lucidlink because that's a, again, as we're bringing up a very good product for editing uh, when you're, you're uh, workers are remote. And of course, we have a legacy NAS. This NAS could be a QNAP, it could be a Stornex, it could be Isilon, it could be a NetApp, but we have uh, different media in different places. And so what we're seeing right now is a single pane of view um, into all this. Now, I don't actually have Lucidlink installed on my computer. We only install Lucidlink on the computer of our editors. And uh, Richie happens to be one of our editors, and I'd like him to uh, kind of do a conform job today put some assets together, shorten them. And so uh, one, I know he's gonna be working in this Lucent link file space. I've got it connected right here. There's a number of projects in here, but the project we're gonna be working on is this webinar right here. And uh, there's a folder called media. So Richie, I'm gonna give you uh, uh, some data that I have. So some uh, different clips and they're supporting sidecar files uh, that I ha currently have stored in Wasabi. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to check these off. I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to put this in, uh, you'll see on your Lucent link, a folder called webinar June 15th media. And so when I initiate this copy, what's happening is the enterprise file fabric, which is running in the cloud, is creating a task in the background to move the files in those directories over to Lucidlink. We're kind of like a universal protocol converter. We can speak S3, we can speak Wasabi, we can speak a number of different protocols. And so right now, all this data is being copied over uh, where there's multiple files. If they're small files, they're being moved in parallel for maximum efficiency. Where there are large files, we're breaking them up into small chunks, sending those chunks at the same time and trying to speed everything up. And then besides that, Ron, I believe I also need a file from you. And so it, it, again, I don't believe you have a Lucent link installed on your system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make you a share into this folder. So you'll be able to put data th from your web browser directly into Lucent link. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a share and I'm gonna put a simple password on it. And uh, I, could, I can invite you by email, but I'm just saying stick this in our Slack if that's okay with you. And let me go ahead and make it a drop folder, which means you can upload content to it. And so I've got this link right here and okay. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in Slack. Yeah, if you don't mind, I think you've got a logo that we're gonna need uh, later on. And uh, if you could also put that in the environment. But uh, now that we've got the environment set up for Richie to do some editing, Richie, let me make you a, a presenter. And if you could walk us through the workflow of uh, creating an asset for us. Sure thing, thanks for getting that content ready for me. So we talk a little bit about installing the Lucidlink client. The Lucidlink client is key for reading and writing data in and out of Lucidlink. What it does is it mounts the Lucidlink file space as a local mount. So it would be a drive letter or a mount point on Windows or Linux, and it's going to be on Mac. We've actually set it up to um, mount as under volume, so slash volume slash, and this in this particular case, Lucidlink, AWS Lucidlink 1. This file space happens to be hosted in AWS in Northern Virginia, but Lucidlink supports a number of um, S3 and S3 compatible locations. So I've cr cr uh, connected to that file space and it's mounted as a local drive. So here it is on my, my Mac and there's the webinar June 15 folder. I've already opened it up and I've taken the liberty of creating a, an Adobe uh, project and I've already got it open. And here is the media that was made available to me via the file fabric. It's important to note that uh, Doug didn't have access directly, so he, he downloaded that behind the scenes. No load on my computer, no load on his computer. So I'm gonna take a couple of those files and drag them to my timeline. Again, the key factor for, and why uh, Adobe is such a fan of Lucidlink workflows, is it allows you to work with cloud-based uh, content or cloud hosted content. I'm in my office in Nashville with uh, gigabit download speeds and I can play uh, a number of different codecs based on that that throughput capability. Now I'm not going to do any kind of fancy edit and we're we're a little bit limited on time so I'm just going to shorten um, a couple of these clips down. 
put it on my timeline. Again, this is directly attached and this happens to be high bit rate content. And then I'm going to take that logo that was on and drag it onto my timeline. Again, um, the ability to link content right to Lucid Link is very important. So I'm going to hit play. Here's my content that allows me accessibility. Don't want to play all that audio because it's loud but, and I'm not doing anything fancy, just putting that on top of there. I'm going to say file. I'm going to export my media. I'm writing that back to the volume AWS uh, Lucid Link 1 into the uh, approval folder. I'll just call it edit and export. So what's happening behind the scenes is Lucid Link is pulling down the blocks that are being requested by um, Adobe Premiere, uh, rendering those blocks and writing that file back out to uh, the directory structure. You can see Lucid Link is um, in the process of breaking down the file into blocks. That's an important component because again, that's done by the Lucid Link client. And sometimes the Lucid Link client can't be installed because of uh, sec security questions or uh, procedures not having admin password capabilities. And we can also use uh, the file fabric on mobile devices uh, to upload content. So this file is has has finished writing into Lucid Link. It's available for playback. And um, because the file fabric is also watching that directory structure, the content will be immediately available to anybody that has access through the file fabric. Yeah, so let's uh, let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and become the presenter again. And so if you look at my screen, I'm still in that same directory. So you uploaded that, I believe, to to approve. And yes. yep, there is my edit file. Uh, so I could download this now. I could share it out like we we did before with individuals um, outside of our team. Uh, but I could also preview it. So I can click that little preview right there because you've made it H264. Um, in a second, it's going to go ahead and launch in my browser. I'll be able to uh, see it and scrub through it. Now, of course, uh, as we talked about, I'm a distributed team. I'm outside of uh, Austin right now, and so I've got a little bit slower speed. But I'm going to go ahead and scrub to maybe the 10 second mark in that file, and uh, we will be able to see it. And yeah, that looks great. Uh, sorry, I had a bunch of the uh, background noise <laughs> or from the, the actual file, but that looks great, Richie. So at this point, I could share it out with the, the end user. I could copy into another type of storage. But um, I think really what we need to do at this point, Ron, is to enable some of the people on the webinar to use the Enterprise File Fabric, see what that looks like. Uh, I think you've got some marketing information that you could upload to this uh, webinar folder, and I'll share that out with them. That way they can see how Lucid Link and Storage Made Easy work together. And of course, uh, Bridge Digital is a uh, partner and a reseller of all of this technology. And so a single, single stop uh, that they can go to for this expertise and getting everything uh, set up. Let me just hit refresh. There we go. I have a folder called Marketing Collateral. And if I do share, I'm going to go ahead and share this. I'm going to make a simple password for everybody. Uh, why don't we just make it one, two, three. I'm not going to allow you to upload files. But anybody that wants some of uh, the, the material, the, the slides from today's deck and whatnot, we will take this link. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat. Let's see, chat to the entire audience. There we go with a password one, two, three. And so anybody that wants um, you know more information on ourselves, let's see what Ron's given us. All right, a number of files. Anybody using that link in the chat to download the files, you can download each file individually or you can check off multiple ones. And then at the top of your window, you're gonna have a, a more minimal view of the enterprise file fabric. You'll be able to download all those as a single zip or a, a gzip, you know, depending on the, uh, the platform that you're actually engaged with. But Ron, I think you've got a little bit of a wrap up to summarize what we saw today and some additional benefits that maybe we didn't uh, present. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. And let me back into this mode here. Okay. So uh, first, before we get started, remember, any, if any questions, you know, add, add them to uh, the questions panel. So, you know, as a company, we started in, in, in 2009, and at the time, our primary customers were MSPs and ISPs that wanted to share their storage. And so we built our technology at the time on a REST API and designed it and optimized it 
to work over this kind of an infrastructure over the internet, which is exactly what we're talking about in today's world when we're talking about remote collaboration, remote work and collaboration. So the file fabric, what is it? It's a technology that's going to unify all of your existing unstructured file storage into a single pane of glass. So regardless of where those assets are, users can be able to access them. And uh, layered on top of that, we're going to provide a set of services. And the first one is uh, security. So how do users access this data? Number one, they're going to leverage the existing authentication mechanisms you're using today, likely Active Directory or SAML. You know, we provide the ability to federate the authentication. Also allow you to import existing permissions off of your SMB devices, uh, as well as to define permissions across cloud and additional SMB permissions on SMB on, on any of our 60 platforms. On top of that, you're gonna get a very detailed audit log that shows you who accessed the data from where using what technology, from what IP address, um, and, and it's important to recognize that all communications with the file fabric are going to be in an encrypted fashion, so your data is going to be protected. So we've seen in the demo today how we can share directly from LucidLink just by right-clicking and say share, but what a lot of organizations in today's, today's world have moved to technologies like Microsoft Teams and Slack. We're going to allow you to leverage those technologies for sharing right off of your base storage. So that could be LucidLink, it could be your Isilons, it could be S3, it doesn't matter. And for you know, Office users, things like Office 365 and Office 365 in, in collaborative mode, you know, you can share, you could, you could work on those files right off of LucidLink, right off of your NetApp without having to copy them into SharePoint. We've gotten a peek at some of our user interfaces. Certainly the file, the web browser is a very powerful technology. We like it, it provides a number of additional capabilities. The ability, for example, to preview not only the video files, but image files and Word files, et cetera. We're able to transcode files, preview ProRes files, preview MXF videos right within the browser. Uh, you saw the, 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 the Mac client demoed. Here's a, here's a little snapshot of the Windows uh, client. We support mobile devices as well. So all the capabilities we're, pro we're providing are going to work across these devices. And it's important when you've got access to all of your data in one pane of glass to be able to find it. So what we do is to provide you the ability to search for these files based upon not only the file name, but based upon the content. So we're going to index the content in files. We're going to index metadata, so things like media info, um, things like uh, the uh, properties that exist in your Word and your Office files, all that's going to be indexed so that you can then search and find that data. In addition, we provide automated classification and manual tagging so you can categorize these files, make it really easy to find the data. And it's important from a security perspective to know that when users want to access data, their, their searches are going to be restricted to only data they have permissions to. So uh, this is not going to um, expose additional data. It's like having a Google appliance right behind the firewall for all of your enterprise data. And then lastly, uh, the mStream file acceleration is going to uh, enable those remote users to get through their data to and from their, their storage platforms faster. And it's important to note that the mStream works for users and their data and between storage tiers. And so now I think we should probably take some questions. We should, Ron, and while you uh, uh, look at the questions panel, um, I already see a few have been posted. And so I'll just read to, to save you the, uh, the first one. Uh, I believe it's to Richie and it says, what editors besides Premiere are supported? Well, it's a great, great question. So. LucidLink looks like a local drive. The performance is based again on your download, internet download speeds. Uh, so the the ability to edit with any of the editors that you're used to, whether it's um, EDS or Avid or Final Cut Pro, any of those will work on Mac or PC. Um, the one uh, DaVinci is also supported. And it, it's cool because LucidLink will work with with systems that are based in the cloud also. So it doesn't matter if you're a home user, um, 
a cloud user or uh, at the office. Uh, LucidLink works across the board exactly the same way. Okay, good. Hey, Doug, we've got another one for you. Uh, and this one says, can you review the tags, please? Can you talk a little more oh, about yeah. that? Of course, of course. So uh, Storage Made Easy, actually, why don't I just show my screen real quick. Um, Storage Made Easy is able to tag and auto tag files. So I went into one of those folders because I had read the question ahead of time. And um, I took a, a media info extract of this uh, clip right here. So we show them a sidecar files. We have the media info and whatnot. But we've also now automatically tagged this file uh, with a little bit of information like the data frame rate and whatnot. Of course, I can put my own tags on here and any tag that I have in the system is then completely searchable. So I can either search by the actual tags. So if I look for like video codecs or whatnot, but I can also do an intelligent search where I come in and I add a condition, I search for a certain type of codec, um, I can search by file name, I can combine these, I can look for modification date or additional media metadata. So um, tags is a really powerful um, feature of the enterprise file fabric. Okay, oh good, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question um, is uh, how, do, how, does, how does the file fabric, how does the system work if you've got content stored on an archive system? And I'm assuming we're talking something like Glacier, Doug. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, some people consider Wasabi to be an archive system. Everybody has a different tier of their storage. So uh, Backblaze and Wasabi sometimes are considered to be archive because they're a little bit uh, less costly than Amazon S3. Amazon has their own Glacier. Uh, Google has their cool storage. So if that's the type of archive that we're talking about, you would just add it in here. And in the, the case of uh, Glacier, you do have to click an extra button to say, I want to restore this content or bring it back because Glacier can take, depending on how you've stored it for, uh, I think 24 hours, uh, whether it's a, a deep Glacier or not to, to bring your content back. But um, if this was in one of the archive storages, this for more media access like Google does or the new Glacier, uh, that, that Amazon has where the files are available. Uh, you just do exactly what I did. You'd go in, you'd pick the files or folders you want, you could preview them. So it really doesn't matter that I'm looking at Wasabi right here, I could preview this file and um, I could I can move that as well. Um, and I can even do something like transcode this file right on the fly. So uh, let, let's say that I wanted to preview this, but this was not a 76 meg H.264. Let's say this was a, a giant ProRes file, it was 90 gigs. I could create a proxy right here, and then I could preview that proxy, and all of that hand, is handled right in the enterprise file fabric. And so that avoids me pulling all that data out of the archive for no reason. Okay, thanks, Doug. Uh, question for Richie, how about copying between file spaces? Another great question. So. The Storage Made Easy server, which is hosted in the cloud, um, has the ability to mount more than one file space at the same time. So you could see multiple LucidLink file spaces relative to the, the permissions that you give um, the, the SME server. And so you could see multiples and move uh, and migrate content between multiple file spaces. It's a great, it's a great use case. Okay, super. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Building on to that. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, Ron, I see a question related to that, if we want to jump to that. But it says regarding file transfers, how they work oh. between the clients. And so not just um, Lucid link file space to file space, but it says Lucid to Google, AWS, et cetera. If they've tried to do a copy on the mobile on a mobile phone, will they have um, you know, bandwidth problems? And the answer is no. All of these file spaces you're seeing right here or these different storage providers, if I move data between them, that's being data movement is being run by the storage made easy enterprise file fabric. And that can either be an on-premise deployment where you've deployed it in VMware, KVM, uh, Hyper-V. It could be running in any of the major clouds or in all of their marketplaces. Uh, but when you tell it to move data between LucidLink and Wasabi, none of that is flowing through your Mac. None of it's flowing through your mobile phone. We set up a task and we handle all the movement. There's no bandwidth being consumed on your device. Okay, good. Thank you. That's the one I was going to go to. Um, oh, okay. uh, question. Uh, question uh, if you have content stored on an archive, you know, how does it work? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was the other one. Is how can you archive content? How can you archive content? When you archive yeah. content, the cloud in particular, I think. Yeah. So if I had that that data that we worked on today in LucidLink, 
if I wanted to move it to the cloud to quote unquote archive it, I could just click this move button here. And if Wasabi is my archive, I could put it into there. And so it's going to be, you know, moved in the background. And now I have an archive. It's no longer taking up space in my Lucid. And so you can have different tiers of storage. Uh, Wasabi is charging, I don't remember the price, but let's say, you know, a penny or two per gigabyte per month, whereas Lucid might be charging more for the same storage. And so I can kind of uh, manually archive like that. Um, I can then search and I can find any of my data no matter where it is. So if I was to search for that file now, I think we called it edit um, once it, it's finished, but I'd be able to search for it and I'd be able to uh, find the folder that it's actually located in. So we actually have a whole bunch of files called edit, but if I wanted to find this one here, all I have to do is say open containing folder and then I could move it back. If it's something like Amazon Glacier, Amazon Glacier, what you do is you set up um, either the bucket is a Glacier bucket period, or you set up something called a storage, a life cycle policy. And when you put content into it, it naturally ages from being standard to Glacier over a period of time. That could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever you want. And we will pick up that it has aged in the, on the Amazon side, but every provider is a little bit different in how they, they archive their data. Hey Doug, we have a related question. It has to do with, does it work with a local archive? And I assume meaning a local filer. Yeah, so if you had a local filer, uh, we have a technology called uh, SMB Stream, where you're able to install an agent locally and then bring that to a central source. And so that central source is going to be the enterprise file fabric up in the cloud. And so that can work in, in multiple different scenarios. You could have something like cloud storage, like FSX that you're paying for. Uh, maybe maybe you're a completely cloud-oriented uh, company and you want to bring that to um, a different location, but it allows those local filers to be used. Otherwise, you could use our web client to pull data up and down, um, or you could uh, probably as a, a you know last uh, scenario, we have um, ability to integrate into what's called our clone, which is a uh, kind of like an R sync. Uh, but for cloud providers, and so we it, it speaks our API. Thanks, Doug. I've got a question for both of you because I don't understand it. And it is uh, support for multiple file spaces, multiple file spaces, even from a one x by two ll to a two dot x two ll file space. Does that mean something to you guys? It it, it does. version so, one. Yeah. yeah, version one. So Lucidlink recently um, released uh, Lucidlink version two. Um, it's got some uh, performance characteristics that are that are improved, especially around metadata handling. So the key to it is that the LucidLink client that's installed on the SME system is compatible with both um, LucidLink one or the original file spaces and the new ones. So that conversion is happening at the client level. That client happens to be installed on the SME server. So and and. One and uh, Doug, maybe you can speak to this. You can have more than one SME server helping do work, so um, it, it it helps with high availability and for load balancing. Right, you you can have multiple storage made easy enterprise file fabrics, so it can be an HA configuration. We can mount uh, multiple Lucid Link file spaces at the same time, and they would just all appear as subfolders under uh, Lucid Link. And so you'd have those different file spaces, and then you can move data between them. And again, all of that's being moved, none of it's going through your system. Whereas to my knowledge, if you're trying to do that on like Mac or Windows, you would need to mount the file space, copy the data down to your to your desktop, um, unmount it, mount the, the version one, say you were going version two to version one, mount that one and then copy it back up. But now all the data is going through your Mac or your Windows box. So uh, we, we do handle that. Okay, good, thanks. Uh, one, one question for you, Doug, I think it says, can tags be auto applied based upon location? Can tags be auto applied based on location? We do have a number of auto applications for the tags. Um, I guess it depends on the location. Does location mean geographic location? Or does location mean um, which storage ingested it? But we, we do have some capabilities of, uh, as you saw when I right clicked a file. So like if I was to uh, go find a different file down here in our media and uh, right click it and do perform content intelligence, which can be done automatically. Content intelligence can uh, one, 
pull out the media info for file, and then two, take information from that media info and put it into tags. So I think that's it for the questions. At this point in time, all of you have the ability, if you copy that uh, link that Doug shared, that will give you access to all the files that we've got, a lot of our collateral. If you want uh, uh, to ask more questions, you, you can reach out to us at uh, the either uh, info at bridgedigitallink.com or sales at storagemadeeasy.com. And uh, you know, we're happy to spend some one-on-one uh, -on -one time with you to show you the technology and how it applies to your, to your own specific requirements. Thank you for your time.